Um, so next we have Sandy, Sandy Wilmot. Um, Sandy has been a forest health specialist with the Vermont Department of Forest, Parks, and Recreation for the past 25 years. She's a graduate of UVM with a bachelor's degree in botany and a master's degree in plant and soil science where she focused on forest pests. Currently, she coordinates the state's long-term forest health monitoring plot work and efforts to adapt forests to climate change. And her talk is, What Are Forest Health Indicators Telling Us About Future Forests? I couldn't have set up my talk better than Jen did. Uh, I chose to talk, uh, to, to look at a real variety of data sets that are statewide, at different sites, some are uh, wilderness areas, some are private landowners, and to try to tease out what I think is going on with the overstory and with the understory. These are the data sets that I'm going to use today. Uh, in most cases, I'm part of uh, the groups that are collecting or using the data. The forest inventory and assessment plots, uh, Randy Warren with the U.S. Forest Service has just come out with a, uh, well, it's in press, a 2014 look at our statewide forest inventory. Our aerial survey data um, is a, a snapshot each year of what the current conditions are of our forests. The North American Maple Project plots that are here in Vermont that's 30 plots that were uh, initiated in 1988. We have the Vermont Modern Cooperative plots on Mount Mansfield and in Live Brook. Uh, we look at invasive pests, a whole host of different groups that are looking for um, uh, signs of emerald ash borer, Asian longhorn beetle, hemlock woolly adelgid. And in 2012, uh, we conducted a timber harvest assessment that looked at uh, stands after they were harvested, and I have a little bit of data from that. Looking at uh, the FIA data, uh, we look at the overstory trees. Sugar maple is still the dominant species with red maple behind it. Uh, here you have a comparison of 83 to 2012. Even though uh, we had increases in, in those species, we still had the same ranking pretty much. Uh, so hemlock, balsam fir, beech, red spruce, yellow birch, white pine, paper birch, and white ash are our dominant species. Looking at current conditions, this past year was, was pretty clean as far as our aerial detection survey goes. Uh, these are points that are exaggerated a little bit uh, so that you can see where they are. Uh, probably the most outstanding would be the uh, red white pine needle cast, which has been plaguing us for several years. Uh, we have beech bark disease, uh, birch defoliators, some hardwood chlorosis, hemlock woolly adelgid for the first time, uh, showing some decline symptoms, ice storms, some spruce fir decline, and some areas that were flooded we call white, white, uh, wet site declines. So we have some persistent white pine needle diseases that are starting to, to impact over spray trees. We also are seeing some unknown cause for some red pine disease in the, the uh, stands at, at the bottom. You can see some discoloration there. Uh, wind storms, we're seeing uh, spots of wind storms and ice storms. In uh, 2013, in December of 2013, we had an ice storm uh, across uh, Franklin, Orleans County, parts of Chittenden. Uh, trees down, trees sheared. Uh, this past year, in, uh, especially in the Rutland County area, we had hail damage, some large hail, some severe uh, storms that uh, on this new website where you can look at forest disturbances, um, you can see that real strong red area, which is in, um, in Rutland County. Hemlock woolly adelgid uh, continues to persist in, in the southeast part of the state, uh, along with uh, a site in Pownall. 
Um, the red areas on the map show you locations where our staff or volunteers have detected the insect. Uh, we also do uh, overwintering mortality studies. And I think by that graph you can see that the severity of cold temperatures really affects survival of this insect and will be key in, in, um, in future health of, of hemlock. Also detected this year was a new non-native pest, the elongate hemlock scale, in a couple of towns in the southeastern county. As far as our hardwoods go, saddle prominent is an insect uh, that in the past has uh, been very uh, seriously affecting maple stands. So we take that seriously and have traps around the state looking at populations. Uh, we didn't see a tremendous amount of defoliation, uh, but we're, uh, uh, a lot of that monitoring will be ongoing. The uh, North Maple American Maple Project plots uh, show trends in uh, overstory trees since um, 1992. Um, and the blue areas are the low dieback stands. Um, you can see sort of up and down, but overall these stands, these 30 stands, uh, close to 90% of them have uh, low dieback. And, and that's continued um, uh, for a number of years. However, we have been seeing a slight increase in uh, the number of new dead trees from 0.9% up to almost 1.9%. 4% on, on these plots. Looking at the FIA data, which is much more representative uh, of the state as a whole, um, these numbers uh, for each species show the annual mortality rate. Uh, for example, paper birch, 2.7% of the, the trees were, um, were shown to be uh, Dead. So the average here is 0.8% annually. Um, so you can see that uh, paper birch, balsam fir, quaking aspen, beech, red spruce, and black cherry had above normal um, mortality. We are concerned about ash. Uh, emerald ash borer, a serious threat, uh, is in New Hampshire, and uh, we have a large percentage of our, our uh, forests that are in ash. We do see some ash declines, although this hasn't been from emerald ash borer so far, we think. Uh, in southern Vermont, there's some ash yellows, uh, but also fluctuations in, in uh, water levels can be uh, serious for ash survival. We do an awful lot of monitoring statewide with purple traps, trap trees, uh, wasp colony detections. So far, so good. Haven't found an annual ash borer. Now, uh, I want to talk about regeneration. Uh, I think this is where our future forest really lies, and we have some serious things to consider here. From the, the Maple Project plots, um, we've seen a real sharp reduction in seedlings and saplings uh, since 1993 when we monitor them periodically. In 2013, we took a look at what was also present on those plots. Invasive plants, 20% of the plots also had invasive plants. Uh, we had 60% of the plots uh, with light or moderate deer brows. We see on Mount Mansfield uh, reductions in almost every species, possibly not beech. Um, on the uh, west slope, we see reductions in uh, most species at our Lybrook site, similar scenario. In the timber harvest assessment, where we looked at 80 plots and looking at uh, what we expect to see there over the next three to five years, only less than half of them had any seedlings or saplings in the understory. The statewide trend for uh, saplings in the understory, not non-commercial species, American beech, those are the dominant ones. 
We see an increase in beech, we've seen an increase in red spruce, and we've seen an increase in white ash. We've seen a sharp reduction in paper birch. And in this side, slide, it shows the overstory on the right. You can see sugar maple dominant on the right, uh, the purple, which is uh, is hemlock and white white pine, whereas on the left, the regeneration, um, we don't see the similar trend. We see a lot more beech, we see more balsam fir, and non-commercial species. So, I don't know what the future is. Tree mortality, we are seeing paper birch, invasive pests affecting hemlock and ash, regeneration failures for sugar maple, we see successes in beech and balsam fir, uh, and our climate change projections, which are showing fewer balsam fir, sugar maple, yellow birch, more oak, hickory, and pines. I know that was fast. So. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. 